Well, good morning again. Daniel Valdez again. It's a pleasure and honor to talk to you, whether you're on YouTube or the Google Podcasts app or the the Spotify. God, I sound old. <laughs> uh, whether you're on Spotify or uh, Apple Podcast or any other podcast places, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. So let's get to it. Um, I delayed, I actually made two edits to this. Um, one, I wanted to record on Friday, just about, and it was going to be a hodgepodge episode. It was going to be about, oh, you know, uh, uh, you know, Sassy's going all digital and the Baylor camp just canceled their thing and, uh, you know, just, just different things that are happening around the activity. Uh, but then Friday kind of derailed that because of the announcement that our governor made and the announcement that the UIL made. So we need to go over that real quick. Um, I want to say this right now. There will be a special dedicated class of 2020 recording, uh, but that's not going to be today. Um, it will probably come down in the next couple of weeks. I kind of debated on whether I wanted to do that now or if I wanted to wait closer until the virtual school year uh, ended. I haven't decided exactly what I want to do, but uh, I felt like I didn't want to rush through it. I didn't want to... I wanted to be a little bit more profound than anything, any other crap that I say on here. So, um, that's coming soon. I, I was considering doing it today, but then I, I don't know, it just felt rushed and, you know, I don't know. I just, I, I wanted to take a little bit more time and, um, really think it out. So we're going to focus on what happened with the UIL, what it means for the future of the rest of not just the semester, but for the rest of the year. So, uh, let's get to it. So yeah, breaking news on Friday, uh, Governor Abbott has officially canceled all Texas schools for the rest of the semester. Uh, the original or not the updated deadline was going to be May 4th and UAL was in line with that. Basically no rehearsals, no practices, no nothing until May 4th. And then Governor Abbott came on the television yesterday and said that everything's canceled. And then Almost immediately after that, the UIL uh, canceled all spring activities, including all spring championships. So, you know, the other half of the basketball championships that was supposed to happen, um, that's not happening anymore. Baseball, not happening. Uh, what does this mean for the musical arts? Well, um, the state wind ensemble festival was already canceled, but two big things happened. With UIL's announcement of canceling all activities for the spring, keep in mind that's just the spring. We're not talking, not even talking about fall yet. But if, as far as spring activities go, a uh, state solo and ensemble contest, and I know a lot of you were looking forward to that, that is canceled. All of you know, UIL concert sight reading across all regions in the state of Texas have officially been canceled. It was originally left up to the regions to decide what they want to do, but with this blanket um, announcement of, hey, no school, um, no practices, no rehearsals, nothing. Um, so everything's canceled, and it's a bummer, and we all knew that this was coming down, but it doesn't make it any, it doesn't make it any less hurtful. We're all, we're all saddened by this. We are. Your directors especially are, um, are saddened by this. They wanted to get back in the classroom. They wanted to get back in the band hall and they wanted to get the baton in their hand and start conducting uh, your ensembles. And it's just not going to happen for the rest of the semester. Um, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, nobody's having a good time. If there's any sort of positive spin on this, if there's any sort of positive spin on this, and I always try to look at the positive sides of this stuff, um, one thing is that at least we have closure. At least we know, okay, we know, we know we're not going back to school the rest of the semester, the rest of the semester. We know we're not getting the ensembles back together. At least we know that instead of, well, maybe on May 4th, maybe we'll be allowed to do it. At least that's all, 
at least that's all taken care of. We're not sitting here wondering or hoping or anything like that saying, oh, you know, maybe, maybe we'll be able to get something off the ground. At least that's, at least that's taken care of. Um, again, it doesn't diminish the fact that it's really crappy. Um, but that's how things are. That's what we've got to do. Basically, yeah, there's a plan to reopen stuff, but as far as large gatherings and cr and large crowds and stuff like that, it's all being shut down, at least for the immediate future. So when this announcement came down, I got a bunch of questions about what does this mean for, obviously, what does it mean for solo and ensemble contest and regions and stuff like that? And, you know, all, all that stuff was, all that stuff's done. The other round of questions was, what does this mean for the fall marching season? We don't know yet. <laughs> it's It seems like it's still too far away. Um, but again, like I talked about the last couple of weeks, perspective is everything. The, the fact that everything's closed is just one of those steps that needed to happen before we can really sit down and go, hey, are we going to have a marching season? Is there going to be a state championships? Are we going to be allowed to go out of state? There's a lot of questions there that are still unanswered and that still need to be worked out. And I don't know if you're going to have as I don't know if you're going to have a yes or no answer anytime soon. Just because there's so many variables. There's all there's so many things that need to happen. And one of those things was we need to decide what the heck is going to happen with the spring semester. Now we know what's going to happen with the spring semester. It's a bummer. It sucks. But at least we know now. That way we can kind of put it on the shelf. And we can tackle the next problem. As far as the marching arts are concerned. The next phase in this is going to be. Are we going to be allowed to do anything over the summer? Are we going to be allowed to have music camps over the summer? Now keep in mind a lot of universities have already set I've already said hey we're not doing our like the summer music academies and stuff like that we're not doing it so what do school districts do are they going to follow the are they going to follow the rules of the colleges and universities or is the state government going to say hey school activities for the spring semester are done and we don't want anybody congregating over the summer now UIL has already in their big statement that they posted, the UIL has already said they're looking at probably doing some relaxed rules in terms of rehearsals and whatnot. Now, that's a very blanket statement. Remember, UIL controls everything. So when they made that statement, football, basketball, you know, they need to be, a, those athletes need to be able to prepare. So... Is that a hint that some things may be shut down for part of the summer and they're going to relax some rules in terms of practice time and whatnot during the summer? Let's say that the half of the summer is gone and, you know, I don't know. What does that mean for the marching band? Is there a possibility that at least for this coming year, if everything gets shut down in the semester, does the UIL relax the eight hour rule does it increase it to 10 does it say hey you can do 10 hours a week because uh because you know nobody's going to be allowed to be around each other throughout the summer i still stand by my prediction that i think things are going to be canceled through summer and then everybody's going to be able to do stuff on august 1st now as far as the marching arts goes a lot of that summer is used for some, for music camps. Remember, you can't you can't learn drill until August first. Is there a possibility that that gets relaxed? I don't know, but it, it's definitely in the conversation. It's definitely something that may need to be looked at if the state government or if UIL says, "Hey." We don't want anybody on campus for the re for for um, the summer, and then on August first or two weeks in, into July or the the last two weeks in July, then you are allowed to do stuff. 
And you also have to look at another thing. What if certain counties have a greater outbreak of this virus than the others? What if they're allowed, what if some counties are allowed to participate in large groups and activities and some aren't? So how do you be fair with that? It's very difficult. There's a lot of things, like again, a lot of things that need to be put in motion. But at least we, at least one, although it's not the result we were looking for, at least one of those roadblocks is put to the side. At least we know there's no school for the rest of the semester. And there's no concerts and that's all done. So we got to move forward. So what do we do now? Well, obviously, music educators got to keep teaching. Students got to keep learning. Seniors, I feel for you. And don't worry, you, you're, you and I are going to talk. You and I will talk pretty soon about everything. And I cannot wait to have that conversation with you. It's going to be a real interesting conversation. I can promise you that. Everybody else, keep doing your work, keep practicing your horn, and... Get ready for the fall marching season, maybe? <laughs> Time will tell. Again, I said maybe, probably maybe. But until then, we keep moving forward. We keep trying to be nice to each other. We keep trying to stay sane. And uh, we keep trying to make music the best way we can. And that's pretty much all I got for today. That's I just wanted to come out and kind of clarify... I know some people were saying, well, what does that mean for the, mar does that mean the marching season's canceled? Does that mean, uh, concert sight readings canceled? It just spring activities are done. Everything that has to do with the spring is done. Now the next phase is the next season, the summer. What are we going to be allowed to do? Are marching bands going to be able to congregate during the summer or is the UIL or the state government just going to say, nope, not until a certain day. And then if then, if that happens, what do we do about the rules? Do we talk about expanding the eight hour rule? How long does that last? Does that last through the entire semester? Or is it just through a certain amount of, of uh, certain amount of days? There's plenty of conversations to be had. We're not out of the woods yet. So let's, uh, let's stay vigilant, let's stay safe, and uh, let's just keep uh, hoping for the best. I'm done here. I will talk to you all next week. Hopefully there will be better news. Uh, I'll probably just do another hodgepodge of just whatever comes to my brain, and we'll talk about news and notes and whatnot. But of course, if something crazy happens, like it does every week, shortly before I start recording, um, we will sit down and uh, we'll chat about that. Until then, I'm done here. I hope you all are safe. I hope you all are well. And um, just thank you for your support. Take care. Adios. Bye-bye.